Hey, hey, everybody. On a recent video, I told you guys that I was going to crack open uh, my own personal archives and start sharing some videos that haven't been seen for a long time, and this is one of them. The Tenkai Change is a killer. I shared this deep dive into this marvelous technique a few years ago on YouTube, uh, but it was only available for about seven or eight days, and then I took it down, and then I received a bunch of emails, people saying, hey man, I'd uh, love to see that again, I was just getting into it. So like I said, that was a couple of years ago, so here it is again. And on this video, uh, this encore performance video, maybe we can try it, calling it. I'm also going to share uh, the winners from the, la the names of the winners from last week's contest, as well as a brand new contest this week. So don't forget to leave a comment down below uh, once I announce the details of the contest. Okay, have a great day. Keep practicing. Okay, nothing beats magic. Ten Kai snap change. It is a thing of beauty, but <sighs> is it only good for Instagram? Or are there some techniques that help you perform this in the real world? This is the question. And on this video, first, I'm going to teach you the change. Second, I'm going to share with you two or three ideas I've used in the real world uh, that really help on this angly, iffy, difficult change, okay? You're going to finally be able to go out and do it for real people in everyday situations. I'm going to show you the technique, number one. Then I'm going to show you some ditches, some traditional stuff on the deck, in the air. Uh, then I'm going to share a few other ideas I've cooked up as well as what I call the snap and change, the card case transpo, and finally cards on the table. All this stuff will really make this much more practical. So first let's look at the move. Beautiful. What's the effect? You're holding a playing card, you wave it, there's this magical snap, <laughs> and the card all of a sudden you're holding is a different playing card. Looks so beautiful. Looks great. What's the technique? Let's look at the technique first. First, it's nice to do it with a high contrast. Uh, you don't want to grab a couple of cards and magically change the Nine of Diamonds into the Nine of Hearts. It's a little lackluster, okay? The luster, it doth lack. So we're going to do this. we got an Ace and a Jack. So you start typically by doing a double lift, okay? So you got two cards. You're handling two cards as one, showing a Jack, but actually the Ace is on top. So you do a double lift, show a Jack, okay? You take everything, take two cards, deck often goes down, or you could hold the deck in your hand, but you then grab both cards between thumb and fingers like this, so you can re-grip like this. Look at the grip here. We got two fingers at the front, thumb at the back. Fingers are curled. That's your grip. Practice, so, and you don't want to have, this is something you'll learn. This will take some practice for sure. It's not that hard, okay? It'll take some practice. One of the things you'll learn over time is you don't want the fingers to be too far. You want to be holding as little of this corner as possible, really, okay? Because it cuts down. Because the secret slide is this in slow motion, okay? I am sliding this back, okay? And as I slide it, I'm going to slide it. The fingers are coming. I'm pushing it right back like this. Let's look at it very slowly again before we start to speed anything up. Here, sliding it, pulling it back into the hand, okay? One more time, I want you to grab two cards, hold two fingers at the front, thumb at the back. It's mostly happening with the tip of the right middle finger. Pulling it in, letting that stay. So, a couple little tips here off the bat. First, you really want to get a locked off view on that, okay? The magic of it is, because, and when you slide it, you want to snap it back. You're snapping it back so quickly. It's snapping it back and again, snapping it back. Now, if you hold this, let's grab a couple more cards because the more you do it, the more you'll see that the cards get a bit bent and whatever, particularly when you're practicing. If you hold it like this and showing it to people, you got people in front of you, this is not so much um, a magic moment, but more a teach-in. Everybody gets to see what's going on, which is typically why what you're going to do, you'll find that the sweet spot for it when you finish the change is actually not like this. It's like this and tilted back towards yourself. That, you end up with finger and thumb. Now, some could call that a discrepancy in the trick, that it starts with two fingers at the front, and when you finish, 
you only have one. But the finish is looking so good. Notice if you did the reverse, started with one finger at the very end, after the change and everything, there was a, some sort of gnarly fist going on that would suck, okay? So the best angle typically is to, the audience is directly in front of you, is you're going to finish, like I showed you with the hand here, you might even start a little to your left there, so it's here, change, and then you're there like that. Very pretty, but now what? You've just done something incredible, and everybody in the world who can see you from an ancient distance, yes, ancient distance, like that makes any sense, um, you've pulled all focus right here, right to the one hand, which now has a card way the hell out here. So what do you do now? In just a moment, we're gonna get back to the deep dive intensive, focused on the 10 Kai snap change. Such a great technique, but right now for just a second, I'm gonna interrupt things and I'm gonna give you a chance to win Houdini's ghost. Then in a few minutes, I'm also going to announce the winners of last week's contest, all the people who won private property. So stay tuned for that. But here's the question of the week. This is the question, and you have an opportunity to win Houdini's Ghost, which is a kind of a really modern version of a classic transformation effect that happens in the spectator's hands. And this features two actual Houdini um, images, archival images of Houdini, uh, which instantly engages people. And this is your chance to win. As always, you can check it out at sankeymagic.com. This particular trick is one of my best sellers. Here's your chance to win it for free. All you have to do is leave a comment down below and let me know. With the 10 Kai card change, if you could take a playing card and snap your fingers or give it a wave, and the card, the face of the card changes to a blank face. It's a blank face, but there is any message in the world impossibly appears on the blank face of the card, what would the message be? It could be something someone's thinking of. It could be their phone number. It could be the first name of the woman or man they ever dated. It could be something startling, something strange, something funny. Suddenly appears on the face of the card. The card goes to a blank face card, boom, and then that message appears. What do you think the message would be? What would be cool? What would be funny? Leave a comment down below and make sure, okay, leave a comment. Let me know your answer to that question. You'll automatically be entered into the Houdini's Ghost Contest. And on the next video, I'll announce the names of the 12 winners. Traditionally, one of the things you do, and a lot of magicians know this, is you ditch it off the top of the pack, okay? You've got your two cards. You're here, You do the deck is here, you do your change, boom, like this. And now you either lower the hand down onto the pack, Ditching that card, okay, sort of briefly there, and then take it up here. What that does is you're diffusing the tension. Having done the, the it's here like this, you bring it down like this, and you do this, okay, kind of casually. That sort of diffuses the tension, and you ditch it. The other thing you can do is to do the change, boom, and then throw the card in the air. Now, that means you have to practice from this grip, not the more traditional this grip. From this grip, throwing it up in the air and catching it, boom. But the timing is right for that because the second it changes, you've pulled everyone's focus to the face of this card, throw it in the air, boom, then the hand natural, everybody's eyes go up, you throw your hand, well, you're even looking at throwing it up, your hand comes down and naturally take the deck and you've ditched. That is strong misdirection. In a theatrical setting, maybe not a close-up bar, but a more of a stand-up show, that's going to work like hell. It's going to work really well. So that's another way to ditch the card. Okay. Now, as promised, here are the names of the 12 winners from last week's contest. You guys all won one of my private property gimmicks. You're going to really like it. Really powerful gimmick. Here we go. The winners are Josh Press. Okay. That guy, Caleb. That guy, Caleb, he won. Magic with Foey, uh, f it's P-H-O-E, like shoe, but with a P, Foey, Foe, Magic with Foe. Bill Borrowed, that's someone's YouTube name, Bill Borrowed, imagine the kinds of magic he does. Uh, Monkey Tonks, Monkey Tonks. Uh, Hepcat, a bit of a monkey and a, now a cat. Hepcat won. Todd Adams, Teresa Talley, L-L-E-Y. Tim Whitaker. Whitaker won. Uh, Koichi Hirata. Uh, Koichi, I think I'm pronouncing, but the last name is Hirata. You won. Kenneth Oster... Blood there. O-S-T-R-E-R. -E Kenneth Oster... You won. And finally, Sean Nyman. 
N-I-N-N-E man, Sean Nyman. You guys all want, as always, contact my team, please. Send them an email. It's at contact at sankeymagic.com. Let them know your real name, if it's different from your YouTube name, okay? Your shipping address, and they will ship out uh, your prize, the private property, okay? Congratulations, everybody. That's my dog, Kiba, barking in the background. So, I don't know what that, could be an intruder. An intruder. If this is uh, literally the last videotape uh, ever, everybody, ever anybody sees of me, uh, just know that I'm super grateful for all of you fans. And uh, yeah, you've made my life wonderful. If you're working seated, there's a bunch of options, right? For example, let's add a little of the shake idea with a little drama where the hands share the magic and you get a ditch. By that, I mean there's this. You got your two here. You do this like that. Take the card here. All focus is here. Right hand can drop into lap and you can ditch the card. Now that seated works beautifully. Takes all the negatives and makes it much more positive. And again, we're here, like this, and like that. Okay, all focus is there, goes to that hand and you ditch in the lap. So that's my, that's my snap and ditch. Hope you like that, uh, the snap. Uh, also too, if you just wanted to have a delay there even, let's say you're not gonna actually ditch the card in your lap, you're gonna do this. You can at least put the hand down the side of the table real casually. Hand that out to somebody. Still relaxing. Then pick up the deck and get it back on maybe under cover of a fan or you go into a cut or whatever. Card case transpo. Get them involved in some misdirection, right? So you're going to use three cards here. You're going to use the chain. Uh, you show a jack. There's the parent, the jack, really a double lift. The ace goes into the case. Spectre puts her hand on it. Boom, okay? Another double lift showing your duplicate. Now you got your ace here. Now, I do my change. Uh, I do my snap, say, like that. Look inside the case. So now you've got focus going from here to someplace else. And that's key. From here, everyone's looking there, taking heat off here in a possible change. Well, everyone's looking in there. Now you pick up the deck and you put the jack on top, having got rid of the card. So anything that allows the focus to move from this locked off to someplace else. It's going to open up lots of doors for you to get rid of this darn card, okay? Last idea. Just to wrap this up here, my friends. Last idea. On the table, real simple. Let's say you've got the selection. So someone picks a card. Queen of clubs will say. Double undercut that to the top of the deck. You got the selection on top, okay? You cut the cards. They're going to cut to your card. And there it is. There's your card. The uh, king of diamonds, right? They go, no, it's not the king. Okay, how about the, the jack? It's not the jack. Please tell me it's either the six, the ten, the seven, the queen, the three, or the nine. One of the they go no. You go wait a second. I guess I got to do some magic. You've laid down a blanket of cards here. Now you come over, pick up your pair. Now I can go here and snap, change the card, lean forward and ditch the card right on top of all the other cards. I hand that to somebody else. <laughs>